Arunang karuna tarangitakshi Drita pasang kusha pushpa bana chapam Anima di biravritam mayukhai Raham mityeva vibhavaye bhava Suddha Sagara Madhyastha Kamakshi Kamadaini Namaste. So now we're continuing with the ever blissful thousand names of Goddess Lalita. Huh? This is my favorite series so far. I get a lot of juice out of it. So 61. Suddhasagara Madhyastha. She resides in the middle of the ocean of nectar. Suddha means nectar, Sagara means ocean, and Madhyastha means residing in the center, staying in the center. Suddhasagara is a place in Sahasrara, in the crown chakra, just before the Sahasrara, there is a place called Soma Chakra. That's the, the reason I don't put the, the uh, Bindu down here where the third eye is, is because I put it here in Soma Chakra. So Soma Chakra is a place where when the Kundalini reaches, uh, it generates Soma, like its name. And soma is an intoxicating liquid <laughs> that, uh, according to some reports, drips down the back of the throat. And there are all kinds of methods of putting the tongue up and uh, you don't need to do any of that. <laughs> if the kundalini reaches soma chakra, you'll get plenty of soma, don't worry about it. <laughs> This is so much fun. <laughs> so this liquid flows down the throat. And there's another Nama, Nama 106, Sudha Sarabhi Varshini, that she is in the form of this liquid. And because she is in this form, that when this liquid drops down uh, and is tasted by the tongue, it tastes like nectar. Uh, so we should all uh, try to uh, realize that state where this soma becomes melted by the heat of kundalini and then uh, comes down in the back of the throat as pure bliss. Uh. So when we meditate on her, we automatically become happy, healthy, wealthy, and wise. This is one of the things about her service, uh, that her devotees are always seen to be in a good state of mind and good health and so on. And this is because of her mercy. She doesn't want us to suffer. The only reason we suffer is that we create bad karma. So she mitigates this karma. And by invoking her through her names, we get all kinds of benefits. So, in other words, her presence in the Soma Chakra is like uh, her residing in the midst of the ocean of nectar. Uh, so, uh, she is nectar personified. So, when she is present there, then all the nectar flows down through the nadis, the 72,000 nerve channels in the body, the energy channels. And so we feel it everywhere. And this is a fact that chronic diseases go away when she is worshipped nicely. I can tell you from my own uh, experience, I had uh, an improper root canal done 
by a dentist in the U.S. I had a teeth with three roots, and he only got two of them. So there was one root that was still infected, and it stayed there for years. And of course, finally, it got really bad. The tooth had to be taken out and so on. But then I still had the infection, and it was a staph, Staphylococcus infection, and it spread all over my body, starting with my head. So I had sores on, the, on my shoulders, my back, you know, my head, everywhere. It was a mess, and it went on and on for years. So finally, when I became, well, or, or when I was initiated into the Sri Vidya, and I began to worship her seriously, then everything came to a healing crisis. And the, the virus, very difficult to treat, was vanquished, not a virus, uh, it's a bacteria. Uh, staph infection is a bacteria. It finally got treated when I was in Sri Lanka and it was completely gone. But then I had scars. I had scars, like especially on my shoulders, because the bones are very close to the surface and so on, blah, 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 bodies. But anyway, <laughs> I had these scars and, and they were like for over a year, just not going anywhere. They weren't healing or anything. Then I started using this Bosma. Huh? I started putting Bosma all over my body. And guess what? The scars started healing. Coconut oil and Bosma. So, see, she heals. Oh, and then my stomach problems? Did I ever tell you about that? <laughs> Those are healed too now. So, she heals through her nectar, the Soma that she uh, distributes throughout the body when you reach this state. So the Sudha Sindhu also means the Bindu in the center of Sri Chakra. This is, this is uh, Shiva and Shakti combined. When they combine together, then the ocean of nectar flows out from their combination. Next, Nama, Kamakshi. She has lovely eyes. Her eyes are full of grace, love, and compassion for every being. And that includes you and me. So we should uh, worship these eyes, actually. Uh, uh, our friend Zhecho, he composed a very nice piece about her eyes. He says it's not finished yet, but take a look at it. What do you think? <laughs> I think it's great. Anyway, her eyes are radiating waves of compassion, and they're very beautiful. She has this special power. Because her eyes are radiating compassion, she fulfills the desires and smooths the troubles in her devotees' lives just by her glance. Uh, just to get her attention, even for a fraction of a second, <laughs> is wonderful. And she starts showing up in your dreams. And I mean, I'm telling you, this Kaula path is really cool. Kama, Kamakshi. Huh? Aksha means eyes. But Kama Akshi. Kama is a combination of Ka and Ma. Ka means Saraswati and Ma means Lakshmi. Saraswati is the goddess of learning. Lakshmi is the goddess of wealth. So by these two combining in her eyes, uh, she distributes all kinds of benefits to her devotees through her glance. Kama can also mean Shiva. That means that she has the same kind of eyes as Shiva. Next, Kama Dayani. She gives whatever is desired. In fact, she gives more. Huh? <laughs> we don't like to bother her, you know? We don't like to uh, petition her all the time with, I need this, I want that. Oh, could I just do this or can I have that? You know, we don't want to bother her with all this trivial stuff. But she knows anyway what we need. 
So even though the devotee is humble and doesn't really, uh, you know, want to disturb her with all these requests, she sees anyway what the devotee needs and gives more than that. Huh? Her mercy is just inconceivable. I mean, you really have to try this uh, kaula path and chant these names. So again, the kama. Kama means kameshwara. Kameshwara is the form of Shiva that rules this whole Sri Chakra. Kameshwara and Kameshwari, that's her, uh, sitting on his lap. And together they uh, emanate all these healing energies. They give the Tantra scriptures. I mean, they're just wonderful together. So she can give direct access to Shiva. This is the important point. This is why we worship her. You cannot approach Shiva directly. Those who try almost always fail. Only very, very highly qualified people can approach Shiva directly. But through her, anyone can approach. So she is very easy to approach because she's our mother. Huh? Mother is always easier to approach than father. So by worshiping her, we automatically gain access to Shiva. And, and she is like a veil, you know, that, that hides Shiva, and gives him the privacy that he wants. He doesn't really want to be disturbed. He just wants to meditate and enjoy. Huh? So I can't blame him, really. Uh, but she is the only one, really, who can draw aside this veil and let us see Shiva and actually become Shiva, Shivoham. So Shiva really belongs to her. That's why she's called Vimarsha. She reflects him. Huh? So this actually, uh, these namas refer secretly to different forms of her, her weapons. The 59th Nama secretly refers to Varahi Devi. The 60th refers to Shyamala Devi. The 61st to Kamakshi Devi. And the 62nd to Mahatripara Sundari, another form of Shakti. And these are very subtle references, but they're very necessary because these are the weapons that she uses to defend her devotees from all kinds of nonsense. So with this Nama, the description of her physical form and her residence is complete. So we're going to end here. And in the next Nama, beginning with the next Nama, uh, 64 to 84, they describe her slaying of the demon Bhandasura. Bandasura was a really nasty one. <laughs> so she had to take him out. <laughs> so anyway, her form is so beautiful and attractive. We should all be in love with her because she is really the source, the fount of life and compassion and beauty, knowledge, wealth, and all other good qualities. So by worshiping her, we draw very, very close to Shiva, who is the Nirguna Brahman, or the object of full self-realization. Aum Tat Sat. Aum Shakti Aum.